How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Conversations with the Rack. Rob here at the Rack Athletic Performance Center with Coach Ed Miller, one of the owners of the Rack, and Matthew C. Kenrich, one of our fellow coaches. So today we're going to have a little conversation about strength and uh, what it means to us as all uh, athletes, former athletes, current athletes, and coaches. So Ed has uh, competed in the bodybuilding field. Matt started his journey to uh, competing in the field of strongman. I've done strongman, and we've all done athletics in our past. So uh, let's start with Ed. Ed, what does strength mean to you? So strength for me, coming from a bodybuilding background, uh, strength was important, but it wasn't the most important thing. Um, you have to understand that uh, in bodybuilding, hypertrophy is, is probably the, the main thing that everyone is looking for. And it's all about look and appearance. It's not necessarily about performance. But um, coming as an athlete, uh, strength is that base and the foundation of everything. So. Um, you know, even if you're bodybuilding, you still need a strong base. Uh, I think um, it's just going to help you out tremendously in all your compound movements, which you should be doing anyway. Um, so, from your from your experience now as a coach, you've got a lot of experience. I know with baseball and basketball, especially. Mm -hmm. um, how do you? What does strength mean to you as a coach now for those types of athletes? So, like I said, strength should be the foundation for everything. So, it doesn't matter what kind of sport you play or what activity you're trying to do. You need to be strong. So. Um, you need to be strong in all uh, types of ranges of motion. So basketball, you're going to need uh, strong hips, knees, ankles, everything like that. So strength, uh, should, you should never get away from strength as being your foundational uh, component for your program. So. Awesome. I think that's one thing where all of us here at the RAG kind of share in common with our philosophies is that strength is, is the mother of all qualities, as uh, one of the researchers, Deep Marsh Midbliker, has said. Uh, I know that's my personal philosophy with, with training in general. So Matt... Uh, Matt's got a background as a strength coach with high school athletics. Now he started training with strongman. Uh, as an athlete, what does strength mean to you? Uh, as an athlete, strength is what it takes for me to do my job as an athlete. Without strength, you can't compete in strongman. It's in the name. Um, it's all about strength is the ability to exert force, um, to take a mass and accelerate it and move it. Uh, that's what it's all about. You need to be able to basically move an object. So we, we all have general population clients with a wide range, even to, to athletes. Um, you just had a high school athlete in here. So as a coach, what, is, uh, what does strength mean to you as a coach when you're working with your, your clients? Well, I love what you said about strength being the mother of all qualities. Um, you take someone and you begin with strength, whatever their athletic goals may be from there. Start with strength and you can go to everything. If you need to jump higher, start by getting strong. If you need to run faster, start by getting strong. Um, if you need uh, even swimming or you need endurance, it needs to start with a strength foundation and you can go from there. But it's the most basic and arguably the most important of all athletic qualities. So I tr start to train that first. And you can even go with uh, mobility from strength. If I can get you in position to do certain fundamental movements like a squat and do it well, I can use that as sort of a station to go forward and train all other types of movements and qualities. I think that's a huge point. I know that's one thing I see all of us doing, especially Ed with uh, some of his basketball players. you got these long, tall kids who, yeah. one, probably have no clue how to squat, aren't yeah. taught how to squat remotely properly. Uh, we see lots of, lots of kids and even adults who think there's only one way every single person yeah. should squat. Um, with Matt's point and, and strength through mobility, how do you incorporate that with your, your athletes? Um, well, like you said, um, you, know, you could be taller, you could be shorter. Um, so a lot of times I've found that if you just get the kids stronger, their mobility is going to improve. Um, you know, and that's, that's not to say that we don't work on mobility, we do, but uh, if you can just get stronger through the range of motion, your mobility is going to improve. So um, even, you know, like you said yesterday, you used to think that, you know, a taller basketball player shouldn't squat, but I mean, they should. Yeah. They need to be, you know, functionally strong through that range of motion and in, in, uh, in the hips. So. Uh, the only way to do that is just to just continue to try to add strength. Um, but um, dealing with kids different heights um, and teaching them proper squat mechanics, you know, we might start them out with a box. And, and uh, generally speaking, if, if a kid can squat to a box and you can teach that properly, they can they can normally pick up on on squatting properly, you yeah. know, through a full range of motion. So that's kind of how I do it. So what about you? How do you incorporate? strength with with your general population clients let's start with those guys general so, population athletes. Clients. Yeah. Um, I guess you would say sort of with your general population clients most of them their main goal is they want to improve their physique <clears throat> typically uh, 
you know, they come in, they say, I want to get in better shape. You ask them, what does that mean? And they talk about losing pounds. And then you talk about the importance of body composition. So really it's not a scale weight as much as a subjective look that they want to get. You could even, you know, you've called it the look good naked crowd, which, you know, I think we all want to do. Some of us do, some of us don't. Sub <laughs> Um Yeah, but I still start with strength because basically what that's going to come down to is in order to improve your physique in such a way, you're going to have to start with some resistance training in order to build more muscle tissue. And a big part of that is training for strength. And you're going to use that to segue in uh, pairing with nutrition. And together, if you're using resistance training with good proper nutrition, uh, use your resistance training in the proper rep ranges with the appropriate times under tension and then supplement with good food, it's going to lead to a better body composition, which is what maybe a lot of the general population wants. Yeah, absolutely. And even for our athletes, uh, a leaner athlete is generally going to be a healthier athlete. Yeah. A healthier athlete is probably going to perform better more exactly. often than not. Yeah. You want a 200-pound wrestler with 25% body yeah. fat or 200-pound wrestler with 5% body yeah. fat, who yeah. do you think is going to be more athletic? Exactly. Yeah. So I know one of the things that's been coming out uh, over the last several years with research uh, in terms of longevity, strength is one of the, the top two factors of longevity. So we have lean muscle mass and just pure strength in general uh, are correlated to longevity. You know, as an elderly person who loses their balance, why do you lose your balance? Well, because you're not strong enough to catch yourself from yeah, falling, right? Exactly. Uh, and if so you do fall, being stronger is going to mean that fall is less severe. You're going to be more robust against whatever injuries might happen. And I strength training is going to supplement your bones as well. Yeah. I don't know if you saw the thing on the news. Uh, this is just super random, but like it was last week or the week before where they said they named like five exercises that older population shouldn't do. I, I saw somebody, see, somebody that? repost the article. Yeah, it was squat, push up, uh, deadlift, pull up, uh, and I can't I can't remember the fifth one. But I, I would like to know who so every who actually yeah movement. who actually did that study. <laughs> I would you recommend know, um, <laughs> everybody be able to do all of those. Yeah. Right. So so let's talk about that for a minute. That's a great talking point uh, in terms of exercises. So what. Uh, and then we'll ask this to everybody, just in terms of body composition from our, our fields there, and then with our with someone who said whose only priority is to get stronger. Do you guys have favorite exercises? Um, you want to take this one first? Um, yeah, I guess my favorite exercises. Uh, kind of your big three powerlifting lifts are a great place to start. Uh, squat, bench, and deadlift. If you can do all three of those and do them well. You are going to have good mobility, good body control, good core stability, and good overall strength in your major muscles, which are um, going to be a lot more important than working on isolation movements in your, your miniature muscles or your smaller muscles. And I would probably add doing a, uh, a chin-up in there as well so that we get a good upper body pulling movement as well. Yeah. Like say, yeah. If you're strong in those four, you're in pretty good shape. Yeah. We, <clears throat> I kind of look for what's the... Um, a coin term but like your best bang for your buck you yeah. know um what what lifts you're going to get the most out of in in the uh shortest amount of time because i mean we might we're fortunate enough to where with our general population people we pretty much work with them either two to three days yeah, a week at, at so, least, so, yeah. so we got a little bit more time with them uh but these kids and these athletes you don't ever know how long you're going to have them and um you know so it's our job to to try to get the most optimal uh, training in any amount of time that we have so like matt said you know things like squat benching and deadlifting uh chins um even just a push-up you would be surprised at the amount of kids that can't just do a proper Simple body push weight push-up um <laughs> you know sled work um you know a lot of pushing pulling sled uh rowing sled um i think that's uh you know a really good foundational base um yeah. Yeah. So, i love what you said with bang for your buck because that's a very realistic application you know in an ideal world you'd see all your clients four or five times a week for two hours at a time and then you'd recover with them you'd be able to go and control exactly what they eat put in their body and how well they recover but you just don't have that um, so you have to be more realistic and just do the most you can in the shortest amount of time that you have available to you be effective and I think all of that for us too uh, and all our coaches here that plays to the fact of you know where we all sort of agreed on strength through mobility or in mobility through strength. It's where you can take exercises <clears throat> that challenge your mobility, like a full range squat or even a box squat for certain people, yeah. and, and deadlifts, deficit deadlifts, all those types of things, and you can train mobility into the system yeah. while it gets stronger rather than take these regressive exercises. So if an athlete comes to us and we've got them for six weeks in the off season, do we want to spend six weeks doing 
these little medial, very remedial exercises that will show little to no immediate benefit where we can train this person more effectively with these big bang exercises if they deserve to do them, obviously, right? Like, you know, if you've got a clusterfuck of a person that walks in and can't, doesn't know their asshole from their elbow, you're not going to have that person doing a power clean, right? But it goes to, to these things, and that's, I think, one of the biggest lessons I learned from Charles Poliquin was how to take exercises like split squats and rotator cuff exercises and use those to the best of their ability in terms of how do I take this elite athlete that I'm only going to see for six weeks and escalate their progress over the guy down the street that they could be working with. Yeah. That's, you and I talked about this uh, yesterday. You know, there's nothing wrong with corrective exercises, but don't be that, that guy right. you know, that's, that's doing nothing but corrective exercises, and, but you're never building anything you know, from the corrective exercises. You're just doing a bunch of corrective exercises. So right. if you can get the joint stronger, and, and uh, you know, um, I think everything is just going to take care of itself. You yeah. know, I'm, I'm not like, shitting on corrective exercises, but don't be that person that does you know six weeks of correctives and does zero work on strength right. and then after the six weeks like you're not going to have anywhere to go you know so right um matt what do you think about uh, injury prevention what do i think about injury prevention um i mean the best way to prevent injuries is just being strong and athletic as fuck um if you're never doing anything in the gym it's going to place any amount of strain on your body um, yeah, maybe you're preventing injuries by not doing anything even remotely sure. risky, but you're also not getting even a little bit better. Exactly. Strong as fuck right the there. Franco plug. <laughs> Joe, where are t-shirts? So, so speaking of Joe D, too. Let's, uh, let's talk about some of our influences and some of the things we've learned from those guys. So, uh, um, I'd probably say Joe DeFranco. Uh, I'm a big DeFranco guy. Um, uh, if I had to say one person, um, he and uh, James Smith, uh, both of those two guys, um, I've followed them for a while. Uh, the, the main thing is just the importance on strength that those guys place. And, and I think uh, they kind of came along at a time where that, you know, that was really popularized and strength was really important. And we've kind of, as an industry and as a field, we've kind of gotten away from that right. uh, just a little bit. And everyone wants to do these exercises that look really cool for the camera, but do they really transfer over onto the field? And, and are they really, really necessary for what you're trying to do? So. Um, that's the main takeaway, you know, among other things from, from those guys. But strength, like I said, that is the most important aspect, especially for an athlete. Right. Um, you know, uh, high school kids and, and even younger now, um, you know, trying to get them to run faster. And, and uh, you know, when a guy pulls out a speed ladder and that's their that's their way to get them faster and I'm, I'm not again not shitting on speed ladders they have their their role but if you just get kids stronger and more mobile they're they're going to get faster right. and um you know strength is the foundation for those kids not you know learning a learn pattern through yeah, you know, speed absolutely. ladder so um there's nothing that getting stronger won't improve yeah body composition performance speed power everything a stronger athlete's going to excel at yeah. all of those things and even you as a general population person i mean yeah. if you get stronger you're not going to strain your back picking up your kid or any of those types of things uh matt so same question for you who's the, the one biggest influence you've had in the strength and conditioning field and uh what's the one thing the biggest thing that you've learned from from that coach uh so my answer is a little bit different than ed's um it's not a widely well-known strength coach it was actually my strength and conditioning coach that i had when i was 16 years old uh, his name was Usman Diara. He ran uh, the 100-meter sprints for Mali in four different Olympics, uh, the most recent of them being 1996 in Atlanta. Um, I was a, well, I still am arguably very unathletic, but I was extremely unathletic at the time. I went to see him for the first time, very unconfident young man, and really the type of strength he taught me was mental strength. And he just showed me that um, with good work ethic, effort, and determination and consistency, you can really be whatever it is that you want to be. And that's something that I... I often think of him whenever I'm coaching anybody, especially young kids that remind me of myself um, back when I was their age. But he just taught me a lot about mental strength, and you can apply that into any aspect of your life, and including you know getting stronger in terms of athletics. But if you have good mental strength, that's a rock-solid foundation that'll set you up for <coughs> any type of success you want to have. I think that's a really important quality for, for our athletes or for something I think all of us try to impart on anyone that, that comes to see us is – the, the mental strength to do the things you need to do during your set or out of the weight room to get the results that you're after when you come see a coach. 
you know, if if you're not performing your best just because you're not trying hard enough or you don't have the mental strength to put forth the effort to damage your tissue enough to get the result that you're looking for or the mental strength to stick to the nutrition recommendations that will get you leaner or stronger or more jacked for your your on stage uh you know i think that's a huge component that one thing that i think you know uh charles once said look at we'll all disagree you know on certain aspects but one way to get ahead is to take people who disagree and find the things they agree on and that's certainly one of the again strength mental strength that's definitely one of the things that we could all agree on as coaches no matter what your your belief set is as a coach is if you don't have the fortitude to put your your balls on the line in the weight room and get fucking stronger you know what are you doing you're just you know nobody ever got stronger with their hand in their pants you're not you're not going to get anywhere would you say it's maybe one of the hardest things to coach is get better effort out of your athletes oh yeah how, yeah. how many do you see with tons of potential that just don't give a damn they're here because their parents want them to oh wow. and even you know older um or run-of-the-mill uh, general population clients they think they can just show up and go through the motions or they'll get results like it doesn't it's not just a thing for teenage moody adolescent athletes it's anybody yeah um you have to be willing to put the work in if you're going to get any quality results yeah, yeah absolutely yeah i think that's huge so thank you guys for tuning in to another conversation here at the rack uh, we hope you enjoyed this if you have any questions or thoughts or comments you know throw them in the comment section down below and uh, we'll see you guys on the next video oh wow